This is Tank's Vlog, March 25th, 2019. Oh, those Duke Blue Devils. This... This close, one green of salt close to making my brackets go boom. A tournament devoid of upsets always scares me because when there's a tournament devoid of ex upsets, when that one upset finally happens, it always bites me in the ass. And in a tournament where, so far, in all four regions, it's one, two, three, all made it through the first weekend. I have never seen this before. We are talking chalk, 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 chalk. I mean, I haven't seen this much chalk since I was in the sixth grade at grammar school. I mean, complete, total, other chalk. That's all we're seeing is chalk, chalk. Chalk, chalk, chalk. There's only one, one double digit seed left. There's only one, there's only two regions where the, it's not one, two, it's one, two, three, four in two regions. One, two, three, five in another. It's just utter March uh, madness is turned into March blandness. But that Duke game, that Duke game will go on forever. It will live in infamy, especially if the Blue Devils cut down the Nets and win their sixth national championship. Because the best Duke was dead as a doornail. They had no answers for Taco Fell. I mean, Taco, Taco, Taco Fall, I mean, he's just sitting there. He's clogging in the middle, 7-6. I mean, it, I thought for a second he was going to go, I am Groot. I am Groot. I mean, every time he was in the game, Duke could not score. They don't, the, the one weakness Duke ha has is their outside game is spotty. And with the, that tree in the middle, all of a sudden you couldn't get anything done. Zion Williamson did have 32 points, but... Central Florida didn't go away, had a four-point lead with two minutes left, but Duke got a big three-pointer. Then, a little bit later, had the ball late, and uh, Zion Williamson got the big basket and one down three. And, of course, that knocked Fall out of the game. And after Zion Williamson missed the game-tying free throw, R.J. Barrett to the rescue, got the rebound, where he pro where we would have no chance to get the rebound with Ty with uh, Taco Fall in there. Got the rebound, got the bucket. Duke up one. But then it went to the other side of the court, and Aubrey Dawkins, son of Johnny Dawkins, the coach at UCF, who was the first star player that uh, Mike Krzyzewski had at Duke, some thirty. Four years ago, and it was just the right play, right time, and the ball hit the rim, and like it was like some like bad TV movie or something like that. It spun and spun and spun, and usually when that happens, it goes in and pandemonium. It said it spun and spun and spun and. Spun out. Duke won. Duke survives. And you know those teams, you know the story, survive in advance. And when a team survives, it came this close, sometimes they're never close again. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see who wins. We'll see if, if this gets Duke going. They've had some tight, tight ones so far. Unexpectedly tight. But Virginia, meanwhile, 
who's had their own scares so far. The first number one team to lose in the first round last year, today, was just good enough, beating Oklahoma 63-51. North Carolina, who had a shaky beginning on Friday, stamped over Washington 81-59. It was Tennessee building a huge lead in the first half, only to watch it all melt away, but after the game was tied, went to overtime, had a 24-point lead at one point. Would have been one of the biggest blown leads in NCAA tournament history. Did just enough to win in overtime, 83-77. It's another two seed. Buffalo, a team I had going to the lead eight. Mighty disappointing performance today. Losing to Texas Tech, 78-58. Like I said, March Blandness elsewhere. Houston easily over Ohio State, 74-59. Liberty led it to half, but faded down the stretch, losing to Virginia Tech, 67-58. And in the game, only battle of the only real upsets were Oregon, UC Irvine on Friday, and then they met on Sunday to see who went to the Sweet 16. To see the only double-digit team in the Sweet 16 is Oregon, Beating UC Irvine 73-54. So we'll see you next week. Sweet 16. March blandness. March blandness. Duke though. Too scary. Many of these players I mentioned will be playing in this league next year and the NBA is in its stretch drive as we speak, and the Knicks are inching ever so closer to having those uh, the most balls in the tumbler when the draft lottery is made, losing Sunday afternoon to the Clippers, 124-113. It was the Bucks over the Cadabras, 127-105. The Pacers took down the Nuggets, 124-88. It was the Hornets edging the Raptors. Raptors suddenly struggling. 115-114. It was the Rockets. As James Harden scored just 28 points. Beating the Pelicans 113-90. Celtics, meanwhile. Another letdown performance. Losing to the Spurs at home. 115-96. Warriors. A uh, solid game at home, got a nice win. Costly loss for the Pistons, 121-114. to 114. And the Lakers, now that they're officially eliminated from the playoffs, had no pressure. So they went out there and got a nice win, 111-106. to 106. NHL, it was the Capitals over the Flyers, 3-1. to one, Ending the Flyers' winning streak. It was the Islanders behind a shutout from Robin Lanier, 31 saves, beating the Arizona Coyotes 2-0. Hurricanes blew their way past the Le Canadien in overtime. 2-1 on a goal by Ant Andre Chiv Let me try this name. Andre Shevakinov. Easy for me to say. Much easier name to say is who won this game. And that was Duncan Keith scoring in overtime to lead the Blackhawks past the Avalanche. And Sergei Bovarovsky got his seventh shutout of the season. As the Blue Jackets down the Canucks five to nothing. Today's three stars are Zion Williamson of Duke, Robin Lanier of the Islanders, and Lamarcus Aldridge of the San Antonio Spurs. Today's birthday shout out goes to 
A player who was at one point the Mets top star, Met fans' favorite, Brooklyn born, should have been 1979 All Star Game MVP. I'm talking about Lee Mazzilli, who, before the start of 1982 season, was traded in a trade that Met fans were really upset about at first. Because all they got for him were two minor league pitchers from the Texas Rangers. Though, what a trade that turned out to be. One of the minor league pitchers was named Walt Terrell. The Mets would turn around and trade him after the 84 season for Howard Johnson. The other pitcher that they got in that deal was Ron Darling. And as luck would have it, Mazzilli struggled in Texas, ended up on the Yankees. Yankees didn't sign him. He went to Pittsburgh. And then the Pirates released him. And he was back at the end of the 1986 season. And today we take a look back to 1934. By the way, Mazzilli turned 63 if I didn't mention that. And we take a look back to the 1934 when a tradition like any other began in Augusta with what was called the Augusta Invitational Golf Tournament but would later become known as the Masters. It was played for the first time. Check out the full story of Barstool Sports and Sports Encyclopedia where sports history lives. Good day.